Hi, hi, welcome to the CLAP series from Codevo. In this series, we'll be covering all the CLAP programming questions right from swapping to numbers all the way up to pointers. Now let's get to the first episode. We have swapping to numbers. There are two methods to solve this problem. The first one is using a temporary variable and the other without using one. Let's learn both. First we have the method using the temporary variable. Here we are at Bob's shop. He has two types of drinks, a blueberry juice and an orange juice. Let's order both. So we have two juices now, but it's in the wrong cup. Blueberry juice is in the orange cup and the orange juice is in the blueberry cup. We don't want that. So what do we do? We bring in an empty cup. In this empty cup, we pour either one of the juices. Now we have an empty blueberry cup and the orange cup has the blueberry juice. So let's pour it into its respective cup. Now we have the blueberry juice in its cup. So let's leave that. What do we have remaining? We have the orange cup, which is empty and the temporary cup that we brought, which has the orange juice. Now let's pour it into the orange cup and voila, it's done. So what did we do? We brought in a empty cup. Similarly, to swap two numbers, we brought in a temporary variable. So this temporary variable will be used to swap these values like we did those juices. So we'll program this logic into the compiler right now. So here we have the main function. Along with it, we have the imported libraries that are required. So what do we need? We need the two variables, a and b. So we'll declare them first. We have int a is equal to, let us say a number seven. And then we have another variable, b. What is the value that we are going to give b? Uh, 5, I guess. So we have 7 and 5. And our output should be a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 7. Now, let's apply the logic that we used for the juices. So we bring in a temporary variable and that is going to store any either one of these values. So we bring in the temporary variable. It is an integer. So int temp is equal to, it is going to store either one of these values. Let us say b. So the temporary variable has the value of b right now. Now we can use this b variable like we use the blueberry cup. So b is equal to a. So the value of a is now stored in b. b part is done. Now all we have to do is we have to store the value of b which is in the temporary variable to a. So a is equal to the new value of a is the value that is stored in the temporary variable. Now the value of a would be in b and the value of b would be in a and the swap is complete. So let's print these values and check whether the swap is complete. We'll have two print statements, one denoting the original values and the other printing the new values. So we'll have the first print statement about these swap statements. So printf of, we are printing two integers. So we'll have two percentage t. So percentage t and percentage t. Since we'll have another print statement below, we don't want the values to be printed in the same line. So we'll add a backslash n to it. So what are the values that we are printing? A and B. And then we end it with a semicolon. We'll just copy this print statement and then print this here. So after the swap, we are printing it again. Now we'll run this program and check whether 7 and 5 are changed as 5 and 7. Here we have the output. 7, 5 has been changed to 5, 7. Now let's get to the part where we solve this problem without using the temporary variable. So there are two variables here, variable A and variable B. So in these two variables, we are going to run three expressions in order to get our desired output, that is the swap values. So here we have our first expression, A is equal to A plus B. So the value of A here is 7 and the value of B here is 5. So when we substitute these values as 7 and 5, a is equal to 7 plus 5, which would give us the result as 12. So now the value of A is stored as 12, but B remains 5. Now let's move on to the next expression. Next expression is B is equal to A minus B. So we have A is equal to 12 and B is equal to 5. So 12 minus 5 would give us 7, which was the original value of A. So B is now equal to 7, the original value of A. Now all we have rest is we want the value 5 to be stored in A. So we'll move on to the last expression which gets that done. So A is equal to A minus B. So the value of A was 12 and the value of B is 7. So 12 minus 7 would give us 5 which was the original value of B. So this is the logic that we're going to use the three expressions. A is equal to A plus B. B is equal to A minus B and A is equal to A minus B. 
these three expressions will give us the swap. Now let's code this in the compiler. Here we have our main function. We have the values of a and b defined already. So a is equal to 7 and b is equal to 5 as we saw in the example. We are printing the original values first and then we are printing the swap values. And in between we have to write this code in order to complete this function. So as we saw here the first expression is a is equal to a plus b. So one of the value of a would be 12. 7 plus 5 was 12 and the value of a would be 12. And the second expression was b is equal to a minus b. So the value of b would be 12 minus 5 which would give us 7, the value of a. So the rest is a is equal to a minus b and this would complete this path. So we have completed these three statements. Now let's run this code and check our output. So here is our output. The original values were 7 and 5 and the swap values are 5 and 7. And that brings an end to this video. And in the next video, we'll be playing the game of order even. If you love this video, please drop a like and comment down below if you have any questions. And don't forget to click the subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.